Hello there, this is uh, another video from Ethicare Dental and this video is going to be on um, uh, x-rays and the kind of imaging that you might be having uh, at our practice as well as the kind of imaging that you might have um, uh, elsewhere for particular types of treatment. So generally speaking, uh, you go to any dental practice and uh, you'll be having uh, what are called intraoral x-rays. Now intraoral x-rays involves putting some kind of device in, in your mouth, uh, a film and a, and a holder, and uh, you have, and then you just, uh, you take some x-rays using what's called an x-ray tube. So this is the x-ray head and the tube, and you direct it um, towards the, the imaging, uh, the film, uh, which is inside the patient's mouth, held by the holder. And it has to be um, pointed very accurately so that it's directed uh, at the right place. And um, a lot of dental practices, including our own these days, uh, have digital imaging. So it used to be that the x-rays were taken and you had to develop them manually. But these days they can be um, um, processed digitally um, and there are various ways of doing that but the the um, process that we employ at the practice involves putting the film in the patient's mouth and we take it out of the packaging and then eventually you have it put through a machine which I can show you so that's the x-ray machine and what will happen is that this little area will open up, you put the x-ray film in there, uh, it'll pass through the machine and then the film will be thrown back out at us, uh, ready for the, the next x-ray and then the x-ray film itself gets repackaged. Um, and the image will come out immediately on the computer screen. So. They're the images. Now, this particular image is called a bite wing x-ray. So if we just open that one up, that is a bite wing x-ray. Now, this is the standard type of x-ray. Now, what you can see uh, in a bite wing x-ray, these are the back teeth, okay? These are the teeth a little bit further forward. And the kind of things that you can see there is this is the enamel around the tooth, okay? This is the nerve within the tooth. This is the bone. Uh, around the tooth, and this would be a uh, silver colored filling uh, inside the tooth. Um, and uh, you can see uh, various contrast, gray, shadows, gray, uh, dark areas, and so on. This would be the holder uh, and what the patient would have, would have been biting on in order to keep the x-ray holder stable so that we can actually take, take the image. And so this comes out here, it's magnified, it allows us to see better what's going on um, uh, around the teeth. And this kind of bite wing x-ray uh, is taken per periodically, uh, often as a new patient to the practice. Uh, in fact, I would say it's a prerequisite, you'd need these bite wing x-rays uh, taken. Obviously having gained consent from, from the patient, if somebody doesn't want to have, to ha have x-rays taken, then by all means, they have to appreciate uh, at that point uh, that there are things that we cannot see, including the areas between the teeth and underneath the fillings and, and, and things like that. Uh, but what a, what a bite wing allows us to see are the areas between the teeth, the bone levels around the teeth, what's going on underneath the fillings, um, and uh, you know, various things in order to be able to diagnose and to treatment plan, treatment plan our patients. Uh, this is what's called a, an OPG x-ray. So the OPG x-ray allows us to see all the way around the mouth. Okay, so here's an OPG x-ray. And you can see that there's fillings and things like that. But primarily, uh, an OPG x-ray shouldn't be taken for every patient. Uh, there has to be justification, as there indeed has to be for every uh, um, every patient for taking particular x-rays um, and OPGs tend to be taken for instance when assessing wisdom teeth uh, when assessing um, 
uh, gum problems, uh, the bone levels around the teeth, um, and uh, other suspected disease or pathology uh, in, in the jawbone. Uh, if somebody's uh, having multiple implants or we're planning implant cases, uh, it's important to, to take an OPG x-ray. Uh, the kind of things that you're looking out for, for instance, when dealing with wisdom teeth uh, and you're thinking about removing a wisdom tooth is the position of the nerve, okay, which travels in this area here, just beneath the wisdom tooth and um, the uh, locality of the uh, of, of the nerve and its proximity to the actual uh, to the actual wisdom tooth and so there's information that can be gleaned uh, here uh, in terms of the proximity and the likelihood that uh, a patient's going to be left with problems potentially after removing wisdom teeth uh, but that's uh, uh, that's something that we'll be discussing in terms of wisdom teeth uh, at another tutorial so you can see the position of wisdom teeth and the proximity of the nerve, as I said. You can have a look at the bone levels around the teeth, and then you can assess the sinuses, uh, the, the jaw joint, um, uh, as well as you know, what's going on with the rest of the bone around, uh, around the teeth uh, as well. So that's a, a very useful kind of x-ray to have for some patients. Uh, the other kind of x-ray that you can take is what is called a periapical um, x-ray. See if I've got an example of that. Okay, so this is um, see if we can get this. So this is a this is a periapical x-ray, and this is a periapical x-ray of a front tooth, uh, and. So uh, you, you can see the end of the root of the tooth. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. So whereas another type of x-ray, the bite wing x-ray, only shows you the top half of the teeth, a periapical x-ray will allow you to see uh, the whole root of the tooth and around the end of the root of the tooth. Um, often uh, with dental disease, it manifests as changes in the bone density around the end of the root of the tooth, if there's an infection there. Uh, and uh, treatment can be planned based on, on that information as well as obviously the clinical symptoms that the patient is suffering, suffering from. So the periapical x-ray is a very important uh, tool when um, treatment planning patients. Um, the other thing that we can do at the practice is to take what are called intraoral um, uh, photos and um, that's just like taking a photo in, in the mouth. So for instance, uh, that's an intraoral photo of something that's going on in the, in the mouth and it just magnifies um, and shows you exactly what's, what's going on there. It allows us, um, not only the dentist, to have a look at a closer close up of the image, uh, but also the patient to understand what's going on with their, with their treatment. Uh, 